Welcome to Reddit Aliens. People who work in graveyards, morgues, embalming bodies. What's the weirdest thing you've ever seen? Not safe for work. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Oh, funerals and tombstones are the family business, and my dad has a lot of stories. Here are two particularly gross ones. Dad and crew were called out to a cemetery to clean a mausoleum, which usually meant scrubbing off graffiti or fixing something which broke. Instead, the groundskeeper brought them over to a tomb where a recently interred body had popped black goop running down the walls and the worst stench of his life. He noped out and called a hazmat crew. Another time, they were dropping a vault, cement box that the casket goes inside of into a gravesite before a funeral and noticed what looked like large pieces of grilled meat at the bottom of the hole. On asking the cemetery director what was up, the hole is supposed to be empty, he was told to ignore it. He did not ignore it and instead brought it up with some others, eventually notifying the authorities. Turned out, they had a crematorium on site and were only partially burning the bodies as a means of saving money. The leftovers were being dropped in the graves of others being buried. Few people went to jail for that apparently. Good. My roommate worked in a graveyard in high school, said he saw an old man hunched over in a chair at 6am from across the graveyard, didn't think anything of it and let the man mourn in peace. Around lunchtime he was still sitting there, uh -oh. he went up to him and saw that he was hunched over because he had shot himself from under the chin up. He said his blood was all over the grave of his wife who recently had died. Oof. Very sad Romeo and Juliet ending. A nearly 50% calcified heart. The man was in his mid-30s and unexpectedly passed. I'm only an assistant, but our chief has been in the field for 34 years and has never seen such an extensive calcification on someone so young, let alone someone that could live long enough for it to get that bad. He was more impressed by the patient's lifespan than the actual heart. I'm an EMT and our ambulance station is attached to the county morgue. Sometimes I'll assist the coroner or pathologist. I'll never get used to seeing someone I once saw alive laying in the anatomical position with their guts out. Last time it was a girl who added me on Facebook that I was thinking of dating. I wasn't prepared to see her in there like that. I worked in a jail and the county morgue was attached to it. I'd sometimes go help them move corpses around. One night we were transferring a body into a hearse to be taken to the funeral home. All of our gurneys are from like the 1950s and 1960s. They didn't really make them to handle a morbidly obese person back then. The gurney broke and dumped a very, very fat corpse on top of the new guy I was trying to show how to do the job, knocked him over and pinned him underneath, and it took three of us to roll the corpse off of him. He was in hysterics and quit, and we all got yelled at for it even though it was solely due to the fact that we have outdated and worn out equipment, but yeah. The bodies being brought in are bigger and bigger as years go on, and the equipment for handling corpses usually was only designed for bodies half that size at max. We tried to be as respectful as possible while handling the dead, but there's just not a dignified way to move a 500 pound dead person. Not a worker, but I have severe epilepsy. I had a massive seizure while visiting my family's plot once and hit my head hard. My mom had to call an ambulance. At first they didn't believe her when she gave the address, but finally one was sent. When it rolled it, the caretaker came out and hovered around while I was stabilized and loaded, then driven away. Afterwards, while my mom was getting ready to follow it to the hospital, he said, well that's the first time they've ever taken anybody's out of here. It's normally a one-way trip. Then he offered my mom a free plot and burial service if I didn't make it. Ugh. Well, I think that offer was equal parts nice cruel and inappropriate. I know the morgue at the hospital I work at has had a couple of bodies there for nearly three years. Usually they're foreign nationals and we either can't trace their next of kin or there's some other shit going on in their countries of origin that means we can't release the body. They're in a special deep freeze. I had no idea that went on until I bumped into the guy that works there. Worked in a hospital morgue for three years, not as clinical stuff, but just receiving and releasing the bodies. Besides checking toe tags a few times for mortuary picking up, I generally didn't have to see or touch the bodies. 
as they were all in body bags before they came down. That being said, I have a few short stories to share. One, for cultural reasons, a family wanted to self-transport their deceased relative's body themselves. They are allowed to do this with certain steps taken. Problem was, they didn't have anything to transport the body in, so they just got a big box and put body in the back of their car, heading for a two-way drive across Utah, Nevada desert in the summer. I can only imagine how that trip went. Two, old military vet died and his large family insisted on walking the body in the ugly body bag down to the morgue with like the whole Taps song playing. And outside the ancient and ugly morgue, they did the fold flag ceremony. Then they all stuck around while we shuffled the body into a crypt, which is not an easy or graceful process. It was so bizarre and uncomfortable trying to do that with them standing there watching and crying. Like, that's what the funeral is for. You don't need to see this part, people. 3. A new nurse didn't know the protocol for premature death of a fetus, so she carried the tiny thing down in a cloth napkin for me. Thanks. A few general oddities, there is always a season of death in a hospital when the new residents are getting settled in and the number of deaths jump noticeably, then calms down until the next year rolls around and another new batch comes in. Also, there are way more miscarriages and baby deaths than you might think. It's very common. It's also common for either one or both twins to die during or shortly after birth. So my dad worked as material management at a Chicago university in the early 70s. He was one of the guys who took bodies down to the morgue when they died. He shared with me two interesting stories that always stuck out. Please keep in mind that my dad was a stoner and pretty resourceful. One of the first guys he had to take to the morgue was extremely overweight, an anomaly for the 1970s. Dad said he was pushing this guy to the morgue and took a turn too hard in the basement just feet from the destination. This huge dead guy goes rolling onto the floor. Dad tried to drag him into the morgue, but he couldn't move him whatsoever. He called a maintenance guy down and they used a forklift. This was all in the early morning hours, so not too many people around. They got this guy into the morgue, but they made one fatal mistake. They left the guy face down. Dad said he was called into work to explain why this man who passed away last night had a flat face. Dad said the police was sued for that. We're all just bags of meat. The second story has to do with the baby, so beware of that. I don't know many details of the baby. I just know it was a baby and dad had to take it down. The policy at the time was to treat the baby like any other dead body and to put it on a gurney and take it down to the morgue covered in a sheet. Well, dad thought it would be pretty obvious that there was a dead baby on the gurney even with the sheet covering it up. So he borrowed a stroller and put the baby in that and covered it up. When he was in the elevator with the baby, some lady wanted to see the baby. She loved babies, I guess, and kept badgering dad about it. He kept telling her that it was asleep and to keep her voice down. She insisted to the point where dad finally said, fine, yeah, go ahead. Freak the lady the F out. I believe he was fired for that. He probably deserved it. When I was younger and was an altar boy, I lived serving funerals because you got paid and the cool funeral director stories. So, we were doing the funeral of my friend's seven-year-old brother who died during a heart surgery. It was tough, so the director was telling us funny stories on the way to the cemetery. One of his stories was, it was winter, and if there is snow on the ground, typically the cemetery won't allow a gravesite service. You instead use their chapel and they take the casket down afterwards. He says that they had a family that was adamant they carry the casket, go to the grave, etc. It's bitter cold, icy, snow. The grave is about 50 yards down a hill from the road you arrive on. The staff pleaded for their safety not to go forward. The pallbearers get the casket and start toward the grave. They get about six steps. Lead guy falls on his ass. Casket hits the ground and he says this thing takes off down the icy, snowy hill like a luge. The family is screaming. His worry is the casket gets damaged and they'll have to go back to the funeral home, etc. He said it felt like slow motion. The casket is flying toward the gravesite and the metal lowering device sure to smash the casket. Instead, it hit a bump and the front of the casket lifts up and hits the front of the lowering device and slides to a stop with a bit of a bang right in the lowering device cradle. They all ran down, inspected, and everything appeared fine. 
He had shedded 50 yards down a hill and landed perfectly on top of his grave. Families slowly started to laugh and by the end thought it was fitting of their family member. A biker family had a member pass away and they were adamant that she wear a v-neck Harley Davidson shirt with her cleavage showing. All right. Gravity doesn't work that way with breasts after death and she had already been embalmed extremely hard with her boobs in her armpits. So I had the magnificent job of sewing them together in order to create the illusion. This profession is wild. Not really the weirdest, but definitely made me feel sick to my stomach. Just finished processing the decedent's personal items and locking them away in a locker until the body was picked up. Usual stuff, wallet, cell phone, keys. He had gotten into a car accident maybe an hour or two before. He was still warm. About halfway through the autopsy, just as I had finished removing his major organs, his phone starts ringing and ringing and ringing. I went to the locker to turn off the cell phone and saw 27 missed calls from mom. Ugh. Okay, just uh, being honest with you here, as soon as I finished reading that one, I was crying, so you might have heard some sounds there. It worked. My father was a funeral director for about 25 years. Most of what he did was pick up bodies from the city morgues or their places of death. He said that bodies would expel all kinds of gases after death and moan and groan. They would also randomly sit up and do weird things like that. He couldn't watch a horror movie the entire time he worked there because he would get really freaked out. His funeral home was also a teaching facility for embalmers and they would regularly eat lunch in the gross scrubs and then go back to embalming. Fun times. I worked in a cemetery for years and became good friends with the operator of the on-site crematory. He opened the retort for me a couple of times while folks were being processed, usually towards the end when there was not much recognizable left though the skull doesn't completely break down usually. It was genuinely amazing to witness. Probably the weirdest thing I encountered were the MFing neighbors who bitched and moaned about the noise of the internments. Seriously, guys, you buy a house next to a centuries-old cemetery and are shocked when there are funerals? The funeral directors had some wild stories, though. People who die at the top of a narrow spiral stairs, a funeral director spraining his wrist, lifting a casket into the hearse, and tipping the corpse into the street, all kinds of stuff. I worked in ecological restoration during my summers in college as I completed my environmental science degree. There was a local cemetery that was quite huge. Due to its historical significance and size, it was an official historical landmark or public park. So my crew was sometimes assigned basic upkeep there. I also lived in a major city. The cemetery has quite a bit of fame in the paranormal hunting world. So the groundskeeper there would have a terrible time dealing with groups of people who would travel to the cemetery to perform Wiccan rituals, etc. One day, I found a hawk that had very clearly been carefully and meticulously mutilated. Head was decapitated and put on a nearby gravestone. There were shells and beach glass left in a strange formation around the remains of the bird. We had to call animal control and the police because there were constant issues with people coming to the cemetery for nefarious purposes. It always got worse right around fall, as I believe individuals who follow such practices would be preparing for Samhain around that time. I was always happy to go back to school at the start of fall, before the weirdness really took off. I would have to assume that even if you were just part-time working at a cemetery, that finding things associated with the occult should be almost accepted, whether they're right or wrong. Dad used to dig graves as a side hustle in our small town cemetery. Some notable stories he's told. Extremely obese, extremely impoverished woman dies. Standard practices at the time was that the state would pay for the coffin and burial if the family couldn't pay. If Dad knew them, he would usually volunteer if they couldn't pay. The state coffins were cheap wood, and this lady couldn't fit. She had to be buried in a body bag. They tried to lower her down as gently as possible, but the body fell, and the bag ripped and an arm fell out. Family is pressing around the grave trying to watch as Dad is trying to cover the grave before they can see what's happened. His pet peeve was families wanting to see the grave covered. According to him, it was pretty common for cheap caskets to give, and nobody needs to see that. Also, they would usually get in the way, and it's hard enough to maneuver a backhoe around a cemetery without extra people around. 
The cemetery had a new part and an old part. The old part dates back to the late 19th century, during a time period when many people could not afford tombstones or any kind of permanent marker. Some people still have family plots in this area, so those graves typically needed to be dug by hand, and occasionally remains from an unlabeled grave would have to be moved or adjusted. You're asking yourself, why don't they just refuse to bury people in that part of the cemetery? Well, people are not rational when it comes to death and dying, and if they want to be buried next to Great Aunt Gertrude, that's what they're getting, even if they have to share space. I worked in a funeral home in college. Weirdest thing I saw was a body that reacted to the embalming fluid. Apparently the guy was jaundiced, so the fluid caused a reaction to his skin. He turned green, but in layers like rock striations. His feet were kelly green, and the top of his head was a yellowish lime green. The other was the thing that freaked me out was a photo album that embalmer kept in his office. It had pics of strange or unique deaths. One that still haunts me 30 years later was a pic of a guy that rode his motorcycle through someone's yard and ran into a metal clothesline. It sliced his head off like a razor at the neck. The pic was of his torso next to his helmet, which still had his head in it. I have never worked on one, but my sister once had a job to rake some leaves from one of our town's graveyards. She worked on that specific graveyard alone for like a week straight alone. She started her shift early in the morning, 6am or so. It was still pretty dark, pretty much nothing out of the ordinary had happened in the days before. So when she entered the graveyard in the morning, the first thing she saw was completely white bunny lying dead on top of a grave. Strange things about that bunny was that there weren't any obvious marks of anything that would have caused the bunny's death. It just seemed to have died for no reason. And it had to be someone's pet, because there are pretty much no bunnies of that kind of species in my area. Weirdest was probably the dude who came in wearing three pairs of pants after committing suicide. We weren't allowed to cut off clothing in case the family wanted it. Guess who got to remove three freaking pairs of pants? Me. Also, the other guy who committed suicide was wearing a sweatshirt, then went into rigor with his arms at his sides. I had to literally hang my body weight on this guy's arm to get it to loosen up enough to raise it above his head to take off the sweatshirt. Stomach contents are always interesting. Mushrooms take a while to digest. Had a guy die behind the wheel and crash into a Lincoln dealership. Had to figure out if he was inebriated. He had had a heart attack and died. Dealership was pretty pissed. Luckily, most of my cases were suicide or natural death. I'm kind of glad I missed a triple homicide since it involved a few kids. Not me, but my mom worked in a funeral home. These stories aren't long, but I find them funny and weird. Also, I'm not the best writer. One time, while getting an obese guy ready for embalming, she found a sandwich under one of his rolls of fat. During an autopsy on an obese person, when they cut into him, it smelled like cooked steak. She came up with the theory that he had eaten a steak very shortly before he died. Usually during an autopsy, the only thing you can smell is blood and guts, etc. Another autopsy story. So you know how old people sometimes develop a hump in their shoulders or back? Well, turns out it's hollow. She was assisting in an autopsy when she lost her tweezers in the guy's hump. She ended up having to get another pair of tweezers to fish out the first pair. This one isn't so much weird as it is funny. My mom was overseeing a funeral. This funeral was big and Italian. You could also tell that this was mob related. The oldest guy there walks up to my mom, takes out a huge roll of cash, and asks my mom in a heavy Italian accent, You know why I carry so much cash with me? She answers back, No, why? Then he replies, because you never know when you're going to get out of town. They both laugh, and the funeral continues as normal. During a funeral, this guy was buried with one of those singing Billy Basses. I think that's what they're called. They are. So everything goes to plan. When they get the casket lowering, halfway through the lowering, you guessed it, it starts singing. So they had to raise the casket, take the batteries out, and lower it again. To this day, my mom still has no clue how it got set off. I guess that guy's ghost had a sense of humor. One more story that comes to mind. Anytime she needs to drain someone's blood before embalming them, she could always tell if they died from cancer. She said that she freaked out a couple of her co-workers during this. When someone dies from cancer, their blood has a very slight sweet smell to it with the metallic smell. 
She told me about a short conversation that she had with her coworker had during the drawing process. Here's a paraphrased version. Mom equals M, CW equals coworker. As said before, they're doing the blood from someone to prepare them for embalming. M, did this guy die from cancer? CW, oh, you saw the death certificate? We just got that in. M, no, I'm asking if he did. CW, oh, I'm not sure I can check. CW flips through some papers until he finds the death certificate. He proceeds to read it and then give my mom the how in the hell look. <laughs> 